we have an issue with Rudy Giuliani. He's on the phone, and you know how cell phones work, and uh, he just left the White House, and they got all kinds of bells and whistles and all kinds of things going on there. Um, all right, one more time. Do we have the former mayor on the phone yet? All right. Instead, I'd like to check in with Jenna Ellis, uh, senior attorney on the campaign. And uh, all right, I know we're worried right now, and it feels like more should be happening, but I'm told an awful lot is happening behind the scenes. You know, I keep hearing from journalists and people in the media, where is the evidence? And whatever evidence they see is unverified. You know, Bill O'Reilly made a great point today. He said, an allegation can be made, and then you go investigate the allegation. It's like the media, they want to see the conclusion. There has to be this investigative portion. It seems reasonable to me, uh, but they don't want that. And also, too often, they just want to look at their phone. No one's traveling that much anymore. And when they do travel, stand in front of a camera. They're glued to their laptop, addicted to Twitter. Twitter is a great thing, but I'm hearing some weird uh, issues with Twitter. You may want to check out Parler, P-A-R-L-E-R. -E uh, that's the place where conservatives can get a fair hearing, where they're not censoring us. Big tech has been a serious issue in recent days. All right, what's the latest with uh, Jenna Ellis? Jenna, are you there? All right, one more time. Sorry about that. Hey, Jenna Ellis is joining us, senior attorney for the Trump 2020 campaign. Jenna, thank you very much. Rudy Giuliani was just at the White House meeting with the president. A lot of us are on pins and needles. We'd like to see action. I understand a lot is happening behind the scenes. What can you tell us? Yeah, well, of course, uh, Greg, and thanks uh, for having me on. And, you know, of course, I can't get ahead of the legal strategy. But what I can tell you is, of course, uh, the president is looking at all of these uh, issues very carefully. We are making sure that we are going to protect uh, the ballot and make sure that every legal vote counts and it counts fairly and accurately. And so we're looking, of course, at these six states and, uh, and also beyond. You know, we have to make sure that uh, with the evidence that's collected, we sort through that. We look at the best legal strategy. We file where uh, we can and with what legal strategies we should and make sure that the goal is preserved, that we are going to make sure that uh, this election is free and fair and that the outcome and the precedent uh, will stand so that we make sure to protect uh, the elections for the future as well. Well, you know, a lot of people are opposed to you, uh, those who voted for Joe Biden, and you're also dealing with the media. The media, maybe you saw earlier in the show, they made a huge production out of calling this thing for Joe Biden. They were locked and loaded to call it, and they had beautiful uh, bells, gongs, swooshes, special music, all this kind of stuff, and now they're calling him president-elect, which you'll remind this, by the way, you're the attorney, it actually doesn't mean anything at this point. Well, you know, Greg, I actually had a great response to that on Twitter. Um, I changed my banner to say President-elect Jenna Ellis because right now, um, you know, I have as many states certified for my administration as Joe Biden does. And so as far as the media is concerned, why don't we start calling each other president-elect and, you know, why don't I just have an administration? I mean, this is ridiculous. And so when Joe Biden is just trying uh, to be coronated through the mainstream media, they are wanting us to trust them and and not verify anything. That is not how elections work. That's never how elections have worked. And CBS News, by the way, put out a tweet that uh, showed President Obama with uh, incoming President Trump during uh, the 2016 election. And Hillary Clinton at that point had conceded. The results were not in question. And even though uh, the states hadn't certified, there weren't these legal challenges. And so that was perfectly appropriate. But the media does not get to call the election. Uh, that happens when states certify and then obviously when the electoral college actually votes, those delegates vote. And so for CBS to put this out, for other um, mainstream media networks to somehow compare the 2016 election to now is just laughable. And it's actually insulting to the American people that we don't understand the Constitution and how this works. We've been through this a couple of times. Something to look at, by the way, in the first debate, Chris Wallace asked Joe Biden um, if he would wait to declare victory 
victory until the election is independently certified. And Joe Biden said, yes, he would wait. That was in the first debate with Chris Wallace. And uh, interestingly enough, since just about no one has any kind of memory uh, anymore, uh, that has not been an issue. Um, but that's something to possibly look at because Joe is, you know, and possibly it's reasonable for him. I mean, our side would do it too. He's acting like the president-elect, although our side wouldn't have to do that. But you know what I mean. Coming out in politics, you take any advantage you can. Yeah, well, of course, you know, that debate was at least, you know, a thousand news cycles ago. So they're hoping that we will have selective memory and they'll just ignore uh, that fact and truth. Also ignore that uh, Hillary Clinton was the only one that said to Joe Biden, don't concede under any circumstances. And you know that if this went the other way and there were allegations, serious allegations of uh, election irregularities and fraud, that went in the way of giving President Trump uh, six states that were in question. Of course, Joe Biden would challenge that legally. He would ask for recounts. That's why we have a system and we have a process. The American people vote, but then the process has to take place. You have legal challenges. The court has to make those determinations to apply the fact and the Constitution uh, to the facts and make sure that everything is done according to the process. So this is no longer political, Greg. This is all about legal and it's making sure that free and fair elections continue to happen in this country because when you only have one party that is still politicking, they're still campaigning, and you have the mainstream media that just wants to coronate Joe Biden, we're no longer living in a free and fair society. That's not what America is built on. How is he doing personally, President Trump? And, uh, you know, look, he's tweeting now. He is keeping a lower profile than we're used to. Is there a reason for that? I uh, know. You know, I mean, he's been in a lot of meetings. He's been on the phone a lot. Um, I'm one of the people that he's been in meetings and, and on the phone with. Um, of course, he's talking to uh, lawyers. He's still running the country. By the way, he still is the president, even though we're in this time period after the election, before the January 20th uh, inauguration of the next president. Um, he still has the business of the country to run. And so, uh, you know, he's doing really great. He knows that this is not just about his election. It's about all of the elections all the way down ticket, like we're looking at Georgia, um, you know, that very hotly contested Senate race there for two of those candidates. He also knows that this is about every future election. And so in my conversations with him, he is a fighter and he's a fighter on behalf of America. He loves this country. He wants to make sure that we continue to maintain election integrity now and in the future. Give him our best, will you? President-elect Jenna Ellis, check her out on Twitter. It really does say that. Eric Huffington Post. Everybody <laughs> should give me a parade, right? Very clever. And uh, you're right. You could just call yourself that. And uh, why not? Constitutionally, Joe Biden is not the president-elect either. Uh, thank you, Jenna, very much. Thanks, Greg. You bet. All right. Steve Forbes, the flat tax guy. Brilliant. He has a lot to say about what's happening right now. We'll be right back with Steve.